Hello, ESPC community members. This is Christian Buckley, Microsoft MVP and Regional Director with AvPoint. And I'm talking today with Bern Henneke from OpenText about getting started with digital process automation. It's a big topic. So how are you today, Bern? Yeah, great to meet you, Christian. Thank you for having me here. Well, there's a lot to get into. So let's jump in with question number one. So the most common question I hear from customers and certainly from community members is, where do I even start? Digital process automation is a big thing. Where do you typically point people to get started? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, first of all, it depends on the wallet of the customer, right? <laughs> uh, it is, uh, I think uh, there are many paths uh, sometimes to achieve the same goal, right? And uh, many, many technology platforms, quite frankly, as well. And sometimes it really depends on, on yeah, the, the actual application that the customer has in mind and the business results that he wants to achieve. Yeah, to, to give you an example, obviously there are a lot of automation platforms and, and it seems like every big vendor is, uh, is coming out with such an automation platform. Power Automate uh, from Microsoft is here a good example. Yeah, um, when we kind of did the pre-briefing here for this call, we talked about that example where, you know, maybe as a Salesforce user, uh, you're using the Power Automate uh, Salesforce int connectors, so to say, to get automatically notified in case one of your opportunities, for example, changes, updates, uh, changes in stage or in value or whatever it is. Um, so these are very simple ways to get automation going and um, yeah also on the open text side uh, we we kind of have these uh, task automation built into our platform but um, I think there's also a different path to achieve process automation and that's obviously via integration yeah and um, open text is kind of known for providing those types of uh, deep integrations into leading business applications, ERP system, HGM systems, and, and uh, others, right, uh, CRM systems, uh, no matter if that's SAP or Dynamics 365, doesn't really matter. And, um, but that, those are the systems where you already have a certain control, yeah, and where, you, where you're investing a lot of uh, yeah, effort actually into putting putting in the data and uh, uh, that is needed um, to drive processes and to automate processes. And in that way, sometimes integrating via APIs and so to say attaching open text document management functionality, so to say, to these leading business applications is uh, via integration and via API is, is serving the same purpose, right? It's about, um, yeah, serving the, the end customer with, with the document management tools that he needs when he needs them in his procurement order to cash process or whatever it is. Well, I think that's a, that's a great segue into the, in a, the second question, getting more in depth into this. So for most organizations, uh, you know, obviously aligning their uh, business applications with uh, content management and collaboration is essential. Uh, and, and how does OpenText approach the, this integration? Yeah, well, uh, we have uh, different. So first of all, we have a long history. If you look at, you know, analyst reports uh, like Gartner and things like that, you will always find out one of the strongholds that where we invest a lot of time and effort in is into is into really um, applications uh, that that have deep integrations into these leading business applications so that's kind of our core business right and and we are providing not only integrations to our platforms no matter if that's on the document management side or if that's on the digital experience side and things like that uh, into those systems, but um, I fully understand that this is this also means speaking about the wallet of the customer at the beginning, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That that you are investing into a bigger solution, right? Because 
Actually, let's take a procurement example. Yeah, you have an invoice management solution uh, a type to your ERP system and, uh, and you want to process and automate the process of uh, hundreds of thousands of invoices that your company receives, right? Yep. Including OCR capture and all those one machine learning, ideally automated recognition and, and things like that, yeah? So we are doing that, but obviously such an integration and, and application also costs a little bit of money, to be fair, right? And, um, and, but there are also other tools out there that uh, give you the promise on and try to give you the promise to make it a lot simpler by, by maybe plug and play and, uh, and integrating, so to say, via these, uh, yeah, platforms, so to say, um, and and achieving the same purpose. I think, I think yes, um, when you look at it, and when you, it, it's an architectural decision, it is, it is also about volume, it's about uh, speed, it's about accuracy and things like that. And there's always going to be a difference between an application with uh, deep integration and APIs and things like that versus, uh, let's take, you know, RPA as an example. Yeah, there are a lot of RPA vendors that also do maybe then invoice management, but in a completely different way. And maybe it's good for a couple of hundreds of invoices, right? But maybe not for uh, telecommunication companies and, and millions of invoices. Well, I think, and I think that's a a great way to 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 also kind of go next with the third question, as you think about you know integration and and the rise, the increase in all of these third party you know cloud based services for uh, process automation and specifically integration, and thinking about the big picture of the solution that you're trying to architect. So, you know, how does that increase or the rise in cloud based services impact the digital process automation story from OpenText perspective? Yeah, well, I, you know, first of all, uh, I think it's, uh, like I said, yeah, we, we've taken the approach that we are, we are definitely investing and, and uh, building applications with deep integrations, right? And uh, yes, I fully understand that uh, very often it seems Easy, easier to, to, to take, for example, um, the promise of an RPA vendor or a, a, a platform like Power Automate to automate certain tasks, which seem to achieve the same goal. But I think it's also very, very often a decision in regards to, you know, governance, control, security, when it comes to governance, control, security. Um, yeah, right, looking, looking data at protection. End -end the end-to-end -end solution versus just that one piece of it, right? Right, right. because uh, if you take an RPA uh, vendor and application, it probably means you're sending and passing around a lot of data, right? Because right. the goal of RPA is actually exactly that, to bridge different systems and silos, yeah? And that can only work when you're passing around, so to say, uh, data, right? Um, and yeah, it's it's uh, it's an architectural decision that each customer that each uh, that you would have to do as an as an architect, so to say, at at the customer when you when you want to design such a solution. I think what I think is really cool is that um, in the meantime there are a lot of options to automate tasks, yeah, and to and to digitalize uh, tasks. Um, it becomes easier and easier. Yeah, I think it's not yet there where it's uh, completely plug and play, even though all the vendors are striving to achieve that, right? And uh, it comes with uh, certain caveats and uh, there's always a different uh, difference between, I believe, an enterprise application that's directly built, giving you UI integration and giving you that seamless user experience, so to say, from the main platform, from the main system and platform, versus a you know task-based kind of automation, um, that's the big difference, I think. Right. Yeah. The scalability, the you know how enterprise-ready a lot of those solutions are too. 
you know, a lot are are not built for the transaction level, the you know that much data to move in a daily basis, and uh, and then of course have the auditing capability of all of those to have all the security governance uh, you know capabilities um, built into the platform as well. Yeah, all things that you need to think of that broader scope. Yep, totally agree. Well, thank you so much for your time, Bert, uh, and thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, enjoy the rest of the ESPC conference.